Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Inferno Friday. This is Archon, and I'm here with Dreadnought. Hey guys. Uh, just yesterday, which was Saturday, we did our first video with one of our subscribers, who is a barbarian named War, and he brought his friend along named Smitty, who's also a wizard. And props to War and Smitty real quick. They've been doing Act 3 Inferno for a while, and we don't do Act 3 that much, so... Thanks to them for going through this Siege Breaker run with us. It was fun to have a double Barbarian, double Wizard team. Yeah, it seemed to work pretty well. Um, I mean, it's pr probably always better to have more classes, but uh, but this was still a pretty good setup. I think. Yeah, and actually, War and I had a little bit of miscommunication in the beginning, so we're both using the same Warcry with the same rune, but that's okay. Things work out despite a lot of deaths, but we still did a decent time on this 5 Nephilim stack Siege Breaker run. Yeah, it's it's not a good start for the run. Uh, wait, I guess we started about 10 minutes before this, but we don't want to show you the whole 30 minutes, so we're starting a little bit in. But you can tell we got a Soul Ripper pack here, and, and no one likes Soul Rippers. I call them the Frog Dogs, and I think I speak for everyone when I say I hate the Frog Dogs. They're fast, they got their tongue thing, they always have it seems like they always have molten and plagued underneath them, and just a, they're a nightmare for melee and and ranged. We yeah. we contemplate giving up on this group for a little bit, but once we start to get into a groove, we do a little bit better. Since the four of us haven't played together, it started off a little bit sketchy, and we didn't have Skype or Ventrilo either, so communication wasn't that great. Next time, we'll make sure that we have that going on. Yeah, it'd be cool too to be able to hear the other people we're playing with. We could all be talking. While we're playing, but yeah, it's true. No one likes soul rippers. I don't even think other soul rippers like soul rippers. No, nope. they're horrible. And to be perfectly honest, I think they're harder than Diablo. So I don't understand why the soul rippers don't run the whole show <laughs> in uh, in hell. They should they should assert power from Diablo and Asmodon for themselves because I think they could take them out. Yeah, it's no secret that some of these elite and champion packs are harder than most of the bosses. Uh, usually depends on what kind of skills they get, but with Soul Rippers, they just seem to always be hard. War is using what looks like uh, my build, or my skill set, except he is using Leap instead of Wrath of the Berserker, which is going to come in handy, especially for the Siege Breaker, when uh, he uses a tactic that Barbarians can use to glitch out the Siege Breaker and, and make it almost impossible for any of us to die. And you'll see that later on. Yeah, it did make the fight really easy. And Smitty's actually, surprisingly enough, using almost the same build as me. He has uh, Arcane Orb instead of Blizzard, which actually Arcane Orb probably is better for groups because uh, it's not as important to slow him down when you have two Barbarians up there. But it seemed to work out pretty well having the Arcane Orb and the Blizzard there the, all the time. But we were both using the Seeker Missile, which is great, especially in, in Act 3, being able to shoot around corners. You can see we just we just died over and over yeah. again on these Soul Rippers. Well, we we kind of had a good thing going for a little bit. With the Waller enemies, sometimes you can get them in a doorway, and they'll trap themselves in the doorway. And you'll see the... Barbarian's not doing a whole lot of damage right here, but the the wizards can really take advantage of this doorway strat and use those seeker missiles and the blizzard hardly without even being able to see the soul rippers. Yeah, it looks like we're getting pretty close here, but if I remember correctly, we're about to get some skull and crossbones. Yeah, that's the problem. We kited a little bit too much. We should have been a little bit more aggressive because we didn't cry quite make the enrage timer. If you've ever got the skull crossbones above your head, you, you weren't you're doing a little bit too much kiting and you didn't get them down fast enough and the only way to get rid of it is to leave the area for a few seconds and then come back in as a group. Um, like I said, we didn't have Skype so we had a little bit of miscommunication on on when we had to re-enter so you'll see that we we come in too fast again and get Skull Crossbones before we are able to finish this group. Yeah, there we get the Skull and Crossbones. I'm just trying to get far away enough to not take damage from it but it, it took us a while to coordinate uh, the leaving and coming back in so we wipe a little bit here 
But yeah, it's definitely easier with a group. They've gotten rid of the additional damage for extra players, so it's just extra health. And I think I don't think any of us could have taken um, this Soul Ripper pack if we were playing solo, but because we were able to stagger it, there's there's usually two or three of us fighting and one or two running back at any given time. That's the only reason we actually could kill them. Yeah, and we're this is an especially difficult group. We're actually we're geared enough to do Act Three when when Archon has my War Cry. He's at almost fifteen hundred all resist as a wizard, so it's pretty nice resistance, and then I'm at around a thousand with my war cry. And yeah. we have a decent amount of damage and health, so this is just an especially difficult frog dog group we're dealing with, but for the most part, Act 3 uh, was not as much of a challenge nearly as when they had the damage increase for multiplayer. Yeah, and you see we finally figured out that we need to leave, uh, or, or not figured it out so much, but coordinated the leaving, and I think here We've gotten rid of the Skull of Crossbones, and we can finish off the last Soul Ripper. And yeah, things go a little bit more smoothly once we we finish this Soul Ripper group. Yeah, the run overall went pretty well. Um, I don't. There definitely weren't any packs that we had this much trouble with, and I, I don't think there were many deaths other than this group. So it's just kind of a rough start of this video, and then you'll see we we get into a rhythm. But if you're not familiar with Siege Breaker runs, it's just go to Act 3, start the act with the Siege Breaker quest, but then instead of going straight to the Siege Breaker, go to the Keep and try and get 5 stacks of Nephilim, or anywhere before Siege Breaker to try and get those 5 stacks of Nephilim. Because even if you're stacking a lot of Magic Find, that 5 stack will guarantee that the Siege Breaker will drop you at least 2 rare items, and you have a possibility of item level 63 gear from the Siege Breaker, which is the best gear in the game. Yeah, from what we've read, I think it's an 8% chance, um, which isn't huge, but, but it's good enough. Yeah, it'll be 8% uh, with the release of 1.0.3. Uh, yeah, I guess they haven't maybe released what it is right now. But yeah, the run seemed to go pretty smoothly. We, looks like we have three stacks at this point, making our way to the Siege Breaker. And you could do this with, with any boss, really. Anytime you have a five stack of Nephilim, uh, bosses will drop two yellows every time. So if you've done public games or group games a week or so ago, you probably noticed that they were more difficult than solo play, and that's mostly because of that damage increase that the enemies were getting. But if you haven't tried it recently, I, I suggest trying it again, because without that damage increase, there's a, a large advantage to having a group, um, especially if you have a, a good group. Yeah, Smitty and War uh, knew what they were doing. They were good players. But even having mediocre players in your group, uh, I think, is better at this point. Because they're, you're not taking any additional damage. Uh, from what I can tell, there's not any additional enemies. So the, the hits are being split up amongst the group. You just have to worry about uh, additional health. But the extra damage makes up for that, obviously. Yeah, and when you... Consider revising your build a little bit when you're doing the group play because one group buff can be a huge benefit to the team when you're doing group play. Um, it's nice to have a more varied group composition. Composition. It'd be nice if we could have a monk and a witch doctor to have their group buffs with us also. But yeah, when you're playing with a group, turn on your, your shouts that affect everyone. If you're arranged, make sure you have some movement and... Uh, and pairing okay. effects that you can use to to kite around the groups for the other ranged units. Yeah, wizards don't really have much in, in the way of buffs that they can give to other members, unfortunately. But there's always things you can do, mostly with slowing people down, freezing them. We have a couple stun moves. But it seems like wizards are mostly there just to dish out some damage while uh, classes like barbs can keep the enemies uh, in position. It definitely helped with me and Smitty each using Venom Hydra because the enemies are almost always stationary from the two barbs there and the Venom Hydras could really do a ton of damage. Yeah, you're, you're either watching this video from Archon's perspective or Dreadnought's perspective. Uh, on Dreadnought's channel you can watch uh, me play the Barbarian or on Archon's channel you can watch Archon play the Wizard. But if you watch both you'll realize that 
Archon is doing a lot more damage than than I am, and that's really the, what you want to go for in these group plays, is try and get a really strong melee tank that can take a lot of damage, and don't worry about uh, um, damage too much as the melee, because you want your range to be st stacking as much damage as they can, and to try and be avoiding the attacks and dealing out that, that big damage. Yeah, but, but don't let that mislead you. I still do have to put a lot of defense in my build to not get one shot from stuff. Yeah, well, especially like with this group, with the Vortex and Desecrator, if you get one shot, then there's no way, even if you're an, a master at kiting, you're, you're going to get Vortex and the Desecrator sooner or later. You, you, can't be, you can't be getting one shot as the range. Yeah, you can't avoid all damage. But I think right now I'm running with about 36k DPS with Magic Weapon. Um, it's really hard to take off magic weapon now because it increases your weapon damage by 15%, but that ends up increasing your overall damage by, it seems, closer to 20%. It's just a huge buff to your damage. Uh, the only time I take it off now is if I'm in Act 4 where I have to have a mirror image on there too just to not die. But I think I'd still use it in groups. So this pack right here is Invincible Minion, um, not my favorite group to take on. But yes. So I just want to point out, I just put on a, an amulet with life per kill. I've been doing this sometimes when my health gets low. I'll just put on that amulet to get life per kill, and then I'll pop a couple of hydras, and that heals you because the extra hydras count as kills, and I'll put my amulet back on. Yeah, so if you're a wizard, take advantage of that while it's still out, because that might be changed in a future patch. You can get life per kill from unsummoning your hydras and summoning a new group. Yeah. The strategy with, with this group is for War and I to stay as close as we can to the um, the actual rare, not the minion, um, without standing that desecrator. And there's really little we can do to keep the minions away from the wizards, which is why this fight takes so long. Yeah, we're able to. Uh, I'm able to put my blizzard down on top of the the main rare, but that doesn't do a lot. The hydras definitely help, um, and you can see me and Smitty trying to get our seeker missiles around the invulnerable minions, but unfortunately they still hone in on the invulnerable guys too, so we don't get many hits off. You'll notice a couple times War and I accidentally start attacking the Invincible Minions and because of all the Vortexes going out, sometimes you accidentally start targeting one of the Invulnerable Minions, so we just we try and watch that as long as possible until they're down. Yeah, Invulnerable Minions definitely seem like the it definitely seems like the most overpowered uh, ability yeah. that elite groups get. Yeah, one of the more difficult of the abilities. Yeah, one of the other ones I have trouble with is fast guys, but that's just because I rely on kiting, obviously. You with see these large white groups, it's it's nice for the barbarian to have the fierce charge with dreadnought and revenge with provocation because the more enemies around you, the faster you can heal. So if you're at over forty k health, then it's really hard for you to get uh, killed by any of these large white groups because of how fast you can kill and how how often your revenge procs. So if you are a barbarian, stack a lot of resistances and get and vitality and get those percent maximum life abilities and make the center of all the enemies your your comfort zone because when you're surrounded by by twelve enemies and you're getting eight percent health back per hit from furious charge, then it's really difficult for you to to drop all the way to zero. Yeah, most of my life regen right now I think is coming from life per second. Um, I wouldn't recommend getting life per hit as a wizard because a lot of the times you're running away and spells like Blizzard only count as one hit. And that's not one hit per tick or one hit per monster it kills. It's just one hit for the entire cast. So, um, Unless you're sitting there casting something like Magic Missile nonstop, you're not going to get a lot of health from life per hit. Uh, life steal and life per second are more reliable, I think, for these harder difficulties when you have to kite around a lot. And if you're a barbarian and you're trying to get through Inferno and you're not using a one-hander and shield, I recommend trying one-hander and shield. 
like I said, just because there's YouTube videos of Athene doing 200k damage doesn't mean that you as a barbarian need to be doing 200k damage. Worry about surviving first and then damage. So get that shield, and when you get a shield, the number, the two biggest things you're looking for are block chance. You want something over 20% preferably, and block amount. You want something 3 to 4k is ideal, 2 to 3k is not horrible. And then secondary stats, all resist and vitality. And then the strategy I use, but it may be nerfed in the near future, so I don't want to advocate it to everyone, is using a attack speed and life per hit. I get up to around uh, three attacks per second with Frenzy uh, over that while I'm in Wrath. And I'm at around a thousand life per hit. And that's how I keep my regeneration up, and I hope that my, my shield gets enough blocks and my resistances reduce enough damage that I never drop down to zero. Yeah, it's no secret that uh, attack power or attack speed rather is super overpowered right now. Uh, I mean, 15% increased attack speed, that's 15% more damage for the most part. Uh, it's good to keep in mind that you're also going to be burning through your resources faster if you're casting faster. But if you have resource generators, though, you'll also be generating faster. Yeah, it's true. It's uh, that's I guess more true for someone like a wizard than a barbarian. Um, but Blizzard has noticed that it's overpowered, and it seems that a nerf will be coming soon. So attack speed is really good. It's probably going to continue to be good, but uh, don't spend all your money on attack speed just yet until we see how big this nerf is going to be. Yeah, crit hit chance and crit hit damage is not being nerfed so far from what I've read with uh, the future patch notes and so that might be a safe way to go to get your damage up and then using life steal instead of life per hit but it, it may not be a huge nerf that attack speed gets in which case attack uh, life per hit might still be worth it so you can see here we're talking about or this is first where we learned about the glitch we didn't even know War was planning on glitching him out, and uh, you can see right here at the beginning, he'll charge in, and that puts him completely underneath the boss, underneath the siege breaker, and so he can't be hit by any of his direct attacks, only by the stomp and the grab. And from what we can tell, it's only the barbarian that can do this, but there might be other classes. Yeah, the key is to get inside of the the unit box, and you can do that with leap or furious charge from from what we saw with war and his big hit is his his three attack his one two three with his claws and that's completely avoided if you can get the barbarian to glitch inside of the unit box so, and this seems like a very clear exploit i i don't think this is working as intended so i'd be very surprised if blizzard didn't fix this somehow so you're right so if you're watching this video and this has already been f fixed if it, if it is a glitch then one nice thing about Siegebreaker is he's pretty easy to kite. So if you have ranged units in your uh, in your group, uh, ranged characters in your group, then kiting is probably the way to go because he's not the best at dealing with kiting. Yeah, but for the time being, if you have a barbarian or you are a barbarian, might as well take advantage of it. It's a really easy Siegebreaker kill, as you can tell. Yeah, and you'll notice he, he's. War keeps the aggro the entire time. The entire time he tries to go for war, it looks like he's attacking Tyrael, but it, he's trying to target war, but war is just too close for the Siege Breaker doing damage. Um, I'm behind him, and he, he never decides to go after me. Instead, the whole time he wants to go after the closest unit, which is the unit inside of him. Yeah, I actually, I was trying to get close enough so you could see my damage here, but uh, it wouldn't let me... Or if I got any closer, I think it would have been getting hit. But we were able to just stand right there and DPS the whole time. Really easy fight. And because of that 5 Nephilim stack, he's guaranteed to drop 2 rares for everyone with the 5 Nephilim. You'll be able to see that soon. So we want to keep doing these kind of runs. We want to group with as many of you guys as possible. Um, if you guys aren't up to Act 3 or 4 yet on Inferno, that's totally fine. We can, we can do some Act 1 or 2. We might even do some Hell or Nightmare if we, uh, if we decide to rush some of you guys through. And if Act 3 and 4 are really discouraging for you, like they are for a lot of people, then there is good news. If you saw our last video, you know that you're going to be able to buy, grind the best gear in the game in Acts 1 and 2, Inferno, in the future, uh, just at a slower drop rate. 
but if you're a more casual player or you just don't like the rage that comes along with Act 3 and 4 Inferno, then that's okay. Grinding Act 1 is still going to get you the best loot in the game in the future. Yeah, it seems like it'll make sense to get some magic find if you're going to be grinding Act 1, but it'll all just depend on on how worth it it is to get the uh, the two guaranteed yellows from the five Nephilim stacks, because that's a big increase. Right, although it seems like they're probably going to reduce that to one rare per boss after the next patch. So yeah, guys, thanks for watching our first video playing with one of the subscribers. Uh, hopefully, we'll be doing these every week. Uh, keep letting us know in the comments if you want to play with us, and we'll message you on YouTube and um, and try to play with you guys as many of you guys as possible. Uh, yeah, a lot of you say that uh, you want to see the loot that drops at the end, so we're gonna try to do that this time. Show you the the loot we got. We, each of us found about one or two things that we'll sell on the AH, um, and. For the Barbarians, I'll show you the, the gear I'm wearing and the stats real quick. Uh, you'll have to pause to look over it since I go over it pretty quickly. Yeah, you see, War actually found some pretty good items. Uh, I didn't find much this time. If you guys have not subscribed already, please do so. We put out at least one video a week, uh, usually two or three, though. We hope you've enjoyed this video, and we'll have another video coming out soon.